Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Simply Unprofessional. I'm your host, Webby. Join me tonight. We got Devin. Hey, everybody, what's up? Devin, it's just me and you with no Rob this week. Last week it was me and Rob without you. Yep. Well, I was there last week for like a second. That's right. You showed up. You were the special guest at the very end, the tail end. Yep. I came in like, what's up? Uh, so this week, Devin, we're, uh, there's a couple things I want to, you know, we can talk, we can chat about. Um, this week an issue, Webby's going to chat about stuff with me. He's going to hate on the shows that I recommend. I, to be- I, didn't, I didn't say hate on. He's okay. going to hate on the shows now that listen, I recommend. To- okay, I'm going to throw this out there because, you know, we rag on me being a racist of SU apparently because of, like, all the things that come out of my mouth. <laughs> Uh, earlier today, Devin was like, Hey, what are we doing for SU? And I was like, I don't know if you have any thoughts, I'm open. I can, you know, if there's a show or whatever you want me to watch, I can, I can watch it before you get home. <clears throat> and he's like, okay, watch the first two episodes of this show called warrior. And you had mentioned this show to me before. And I looked it up and it's, to be fair, it's, it's a bunch of Chinese people who come over to San Francisco as laborers. Yep. It takes place during the Tong Wars. Yeah. Which is like the early 1800s. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's that kind of, you know, thematic, you know, scene here. And I write to Devin, (laughs) hold on. I have to do this verbatim. Uh, let's see. I wrote to Devin. So, so, so this next sentence is going to sound racist, but it's not intended that way. But you love making me watch Asian shit, don't you? But I, listen, yeah, that's that's verbatim what and I said to like, Devin. And then he's like, "You don't even recommend me stuff that's not." <laughs> to I'm be like, fair, I, I, with the exception of How I Met Your Mother, I don't remember not the right? last thing that you recommended to me, especially for an SU that was not you. Asian oriented in some fashion. I recommended you two things fairly recently. <laughs> Okay, what? Uh, the first one is um, the second season of... Uh, what is it? Uh, hold on. Not the Unabomber. Well, that that, that, that works. Mindhunter? But... Yeah, I recommended you... Or Manhunt. Ma- Manhunt? Yeah, I recommended you Manhunt. <laughs> you didn't tell... You didn't watch that yet. And then I also recommended... I've recommended Ozark to you like a month, and I don't think you've watched Ozark yet. I don't think you've ever recommended Ozark to me. I've mentioned that does not times. sound familiar to me at all. I've been like, yo, Webbs, Ozark is definitely something that's up your alley, and I really want someone to talk about it with. And it's like three seasons, as Jason Bateman is really good. I brought yeah, this up I, a couple I, of 100% times. 100% I don't remember this. Um, yeah. There have Seriously? been, especially in r- r- the recent days, there has been probably reasons on my end as to why I don't remember this conversation at all. Um, I would have recommend I would have recommended this other movie to you to watch, but it honestly just wasn't that good. The new movie on Netflix, Outside the Wire, with Anthony Mackie. Oh, I was going to ask you about that. It wasn't that good. Oh man, I watched it. It wasn't. It looked, I mean, it looked good. It's fine to watch. It's just like, like after like five minutes, you're like, oh, I get where this is going, and then you're just like, okay, this is cool. All it's right. it's not like it's not bad. It's not like a waste of time, but I, I guarantee you when you put it on, you're gonna start doing other stuff. Well, okay. So since you recommend let's start with the war with Warrior. Or the Warrior. Yeah. I don't remember which one. 
Warriors. Just warrior. Okay. Or Warrior. Just warrior. Sorry. First off, when I went to my site that I go to, and I typed this in, there's a lot of things that pop up with Warrior in it. So that's why yeah, I started asking sense. you the random questions afterwards to make sure I was getting the right one. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. You know, you're um, going to get a so, lot of things. Since you are the one who recommended the warrior to me, why don't you go ahead and start talking about how, like, essentially what the, at least the first two episodes, because that's all I've watched up until, uh, I mean, so that's, far. I don't, I don't think that's as far as I've gotten myself. Like, well, um, well then why don't you I, go ahead and give us a rundown of essentially the premise of this show up, up till then. So the premise of the show, um, I reach the synopsis here. The premise of the show is, you know, during the Tong Wars, it's, which is like the late 1800s at this point in time. Um, his name, I think his name is like Assam. Assam, Assam, yep. Yeah, Assam, yeah. His name is Assam, spelled A-H-S-A-H-M, like two words. Um, one second here. Sorry, I, remember I told you that that, that was going to happen. So you want to fill some dead air for a second? Want to ask me a question about something else? I, can, I would I love to, but I'm I also know. responding to someone. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I'll just stop my response because mine isn't as important. Uh, so yeah, so Assam comes, it starts off with this, with, with all these, okay, we're going to use derogatory terms here because that's what they use in the show. But it, show, it, it starts off with a bunch of Chinamen coming off the boat, straight off the boat, Okay. And they're landing in San Francisco, and they're going through immigration. And essentially, this other Chinese gentleman is explaining to all of them that they are now going to be workers for, I don't fucking remember, uh, Father June, June something or other. Um, I, I'm going to butcher all the names in this. Um, but he essentially bought all of the people on these boats for they compared it to like a bottle of cheap wine and this, that, and the other thing. And one of the immigration guards, who's an American, uh, gets in the face of one of the Chinese guys and like shoves him to the ground. And Asan comes and tries to explain to the guy who who's picking food up off the ground. He says, don't do that. You know, don't let these guys, you know, treat you like this, this, that, and the other thing. And then the immigration guy gets in his face and Asan speaks English back to them and they think it's a neat parlor trick. So then he gets mouthy with them and the one big immigration guard takes off his jacket. He's getting ready to box this dude. He's like, you want to fight me? Blah, blah, blah. And Asan's just like, that's not the right question. Uh, And then he literally like within two seconds punches out the other two immigration guards, just one punch knockout. And then he looks at the other guy, the bigger guy. He's like, you know, the real question is, do you want to find out if I can beat you? And, uh, he ends up kicking the shit out of that guy too. And that catches the eye of the Asian who was explaining to everybody who they work for now. Yeah. His name's, uh, Chow. Chow. Um, yeah. He's, yeah. He's uh, described as being like a fixer. Um, he basically like sets you up with, he has connections and sets people up with goods yeah. um, and or people. <laughs> yeah. In this case. Uh, yeah. I mean, when, so when he finds out, when Chow finds him out, he pulls him aside and it's like, Hey, you know, don't, don't let them know that you know how to speak English. He's like, it's just going to cause you problems, you know? Um, and then he, he's like, I'm, you know, I'm going to take you somewhere somewhere special he winds up taking him to um the june. like the leader the tong yeah he takes him to uh young june um who is the the uh the son of daughter not the son of the leader of the tongs who's father june yeah um so then when he gets there you know now i will say the- hold on i will say with the exception of assam who you're supposed to like because you know he's badass was it Young Jun? Yeah, Young Jun. Fucking favorite character. <laughs> he is like your typical if you if you were to watch like an Asian like a Chinese martial arts movie that takes place in China, and there's just like that one 
triad gang member with his collar popped and he's just acting super cool. That's this dude. This guy acts super cool all the time. And then you find out later on, like by the second episode, you find out he's kind of a psychopath, but in a fun way. I don't I mean that's an odd sentence to say, but it's true. <laughs> Because, man, he did not stop stabbing that dude when he died, when he was dead. No, and then he was like, like yo, he's dead. And he's just like, he lifts his head up and just slices the third. He's like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but, I mean, we find out, the cool too, that they have morals. Like, well, I mean, not morals per se, but like a code. Because, like, we're jumping ahead a bit, but there was a shipment of opium, right? Um, and it was, like, the rival gang's opium. And... Young June just set the whole cart on fire, and the guy who was with him was like, what are you doing? That's a lot of fucking, you know, molasses and blah, blah, blah. And Young June's just like, we're not thieves, and this isn't a robbery. Like, we're we're here to make a point, and we, we're making it, so. We're sending a message, but I mean, yeah, I mean. Oh, you're breaking up again. Sorry, I, I was there you go. pouring something better. Yeah, the tongs, they, um. They were the thing is they used to run the opium like they they were like the leader of in like the running the opium in the city, but then as uh actually Young June was explaining it to to Assam he was like yeah he's like somebody somewhere down the line pissed off some uh, pissed off like somebody high up back in China and they they cut our supply off yeah um and then when that happened one of the the, the other gangs moved in and started you know, distributing opium, but then there was like a, a deal that was made basically where they would still be, they would still be allowed to sell opium. And that's how basically, you know, this all kind of started. There was a deal being made, but then now the, the deal is kind of not being honored anymore. So that's kind of where this is going. So yeah, though, there are a bunch of fighting. I do love the title of the first episode though, the itchy onion, the itchy onion. Yeah. Because that's what a lot of the, the new recruits in the June gang, uh, ones, are called the, uh, the they're tongue, all called yeah, the onions. <clears throat> yep. So I don't know why they're called onions. I don't know if they yep. actually explain that, but uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. So basically, uh, kind of rewinding back a little bit, um, he gets locked in his room once he's there. You know, he gets locked in his room. He meets the head guy, and he's just not being very respectful. And then he, you know, he calls him back. He's like, "Hey, did I just come off a boat today?" And he's like, no, he's like, basically, he was just like, so pay me some goddamn respect. <laughs> you know, well, to be fair, you- like watching that scene, I don't think that he like Assam was being overly disrespectful. It was the fact that he when he felt like he was being wow. dismissed, he didn't bow. He just turned and walked away. Yeah. And then that's when the other guy stopped him. And he was like, dude, you bow. You fucking bow to me. It's like, ah, yeah. Jesus Christ, this guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, though, I think Abraham would do the same thing. Yeah, you're not wrong. One hundred percent. It's a respect thing. Um. Yep. All right. Sorry to interrupt. I'm just continue. Oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. So then, basically, you know, when that happened, he he wind up going to his. He got put in a room and was like, "Yo, hey, you know, basically, you know, like mafia speak." He's like, "Look, you're not, you're not a made guy. You fucking stay in your room unless you're going outside to piss or shit." Yep. He's like, that's what you do. He's like, tomorrow we're gonna, you know, we're gonna test you out tomorrow. Uh, so then you know he's in his room. He's just kind of like sitting down, and you could tell like he he kind of understands what's happening. He's just kind of like fuck. Like he he didn't really want to be involved in this, but at the same time, like it's better than the alternative of like working on the street. Yeah, because so he's, he, he, he's just here looking for someone. Yeah, you know. We find out later he's looking for his sister. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. So he's just kind of like fuck. And then the next day he gets pulled. But basically during the, like during like that day out, he winds up actually befriending uh, Young June. He winds up befriending him, and they kind of become like friends. And that's kind of where you know he, they wind up going to a brothel. Um, and then you know, hell yeah, folks, I, titties. <laughs> yeah, shows a lot of titties. In it. Shows a lot of titties. A lot of titties. Um, yeah, so you had lost my train of thought for a second. Titties distracted me. Okay. Brothels. They went to the brothels. Brothel. Yeah. Yeah, so they went to the brothels. Um, then the rival, where they meet. rival hatchetmen show up. Yeah, well, that's where they meet Toy. 
Um, that's where they meet. Um, uh, that's where they meet. Uh, uh, la, 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 like uh, Atoy. That's where they meet her. She's like the brothel leader, or like the the madam of the brothel. That's what I wanted to say. She's like the madam of the brothel. Um, she's there, and they meet her, and they, you know, kind of like you could tell that uh, young June is like knows her well, and you know she kind of walks him around, da 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 da, like make you know. Rings the bell, all the girls line up. They get their girls, and they go. And then you know we, you know later, you know uh, young June, he he's in the room with, with two girls, and these fucking hatchet men come up and just put a knife to his throat, and drag his ass out of the room. <laughs> And then, you know, they're walking him down and they're, you know, because while they were there, he, um, he asked, what is his name? Sam asked, he was like, hey, you know, do you know this person's name? He's, you know, he said a name. I don't remember what the name was. Yeah, top of my head. I don't remember any of the uh, names. I can probably tell you here. Hold on. He asked, do you know? Let me see if I can. Find I know a Sam, I know Young June, and I know Officer Lee. Those are really the only three names that I really remember. I like Officer Lee. Officer Lee's Officer Lee like looks kind of like a serial killer. Being honest, what are you talking about? I, he just has that that serial killer aesthetic. Oh, also, I've recommended a uh, Letter Caddy to you. you. You haven't watched that either. There's another thing I recommended to you. But anyway, um, yeah. So. Basically, that happened, and then basically they were like, "Yo, you know, this was this was a guy that was asking about uh, that girl earlier." And then basically, and that's when um, that's when Assam comes on the stairs. He's like, "No, I was." And then they're like, "All right, well, you're coming with us." He's just like, "No, nah, I'm good." <laughs> and then they start fighting. And he basically kicks all their asses very quickly. Yeah. And then he sits down on one guy's chest, and he's just kind of waiting for them, them like stagger back up. They start pulling out hatchets. He's just like, oh, here we go again. He gets up and kicks her asses again. And then, yeah, so then they leave empty handed. And then that's when he really impresses. That's when he really impresses young June and also impresses Atoy and all that. And basically, you know, they go on about their way. And then, you know, later he, you know, he goes outside to have a smoke. And then, like, Atoy comes out and she's talking to him. She's just like, you know, I forgot what, how the speech went, but the, but the basic premise was, you know, like he was like, you know, you sold me out. And she's like, no, I didn't. And he's like, well, if you didn't, one of your girls did. And then, and then she's like, anyone would know better than to speak their business in front of horse. Yep. And I'm like, I mean, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> like, I feel like I was arguing that case in court. And I was like, well, I mean, she, she makes a good argument. She makes a really good argument. You were kind of just asking your business out in front of horse. Um, and then, you know, you can tell that, that there's some chemistry there with, with those two. Uh, and then he winds up leaving, they go back and we see him kind of get, become like, you know, he gets his suit, you know, he, he gets his suit and he comes brand. like, uh, yeah, he gets a branded in a suit. He gets branded. Um, and yeah, let me see. Now I will say while all of this is happening, there is an Irish pub in the neighborhood and they are very anti Chinese because the Chinese are taking their jobs for far cheaper. Yep. And uh And Lee's Lee's the only one who's like being like intelligent. He when he, like when they're like I think that have they happen in episode two, I think, but when they're walking through, they're like he's like, Oh, it's more crowded than usual. He's like, yeah, well the you know the other officers like, yeah, you know, the guy you know the Chinese keep coming over and taking our jobs for cheap. They can get like 10, you know, they can get 10 Chinamen for the price of like one of us and you know, whatever. And then he's just like, well, isn't that the, like, why are they blaming them? Like, isn't that the fault of the people hiring? Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's just like, I mean, that's the fault of the people hiring them. That's not really any of the Chinese fault. But anyway, so why this is happening um, the later to that night, that same night or later to that, like that night, the, um, these two Irishmen beat, basically beat bludgeon, uh, these two Chinese men, they bludgeon them with hammers and like bash their skulls in with hammers. And officer Lee, who we find out later is officer Lee sees it. And he kind of like apprehends the two. He apprehends the two. Yo, he did, he did much better with that baton than I thought he was. I'm not going to yep. lie. Yep. <laughs> 
Like he pulled out of the baton. I was like, oh, this isn't going to go well. I'm like, oh no, he handed himself. And appa- so apparently Officer Lee was also like, a, was also, I don't know if he was a Confederate soldier, but he came from the South. Yeah. Savannah, uh, Savannah to, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. And he, he is getting nothing but Georgia. shit for it. Pretty much. Pre- nothing but shit. Like no, nobody likes him. <laughs> He's fighting with all his, all his British colleagues or Irish colleagues, and it's just not good. It's not good. He's he's getting no shit. Anyway, so that's when Assam winds up. I think he, is that when he sees the people of the the that- the rival. Yeah, because he's out. He's out collecting protection money with young June and then he sees the people walk by and he follows them and then he sees them throwing hatchets and that's that's the building that is owned by the rival gang I guess yep. and uh, yeah. young June catches him he says yo man this isn't our turf we don't tread here blah 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 and so they leave and then later on that night he goes back by himself yep but um, before that that's when that that's when that's when the Chinese laborers are killed and then that's when um, Lee stops them, he arrests them, and then after that, we cut to the governor, who's who recently just married his wife. Um, and the wife wants and, nothing to do with it. Oh, why? Did, the governor reminds me of somebody. That actor of the governor reminds me of somebody, and I cannot think who it is. And it's not Nick Offerman. It's like he plays. He, he, he looks like a goofier Nick Offerman, but I can't think of who the fuck it is. Oh my god! I can't believe I can't think of it. Are you talking about just purely physically? He reminds you of someone, or his like the like the, no no, no the like, character. like like his look, his look. I, I I have the picture of the guy in my head, and I just cannot. Oh, hold on, I might know. Hold on, I'm you continue, and I'll. Uh, yeah. Oh man. But, um, yeah. So while that's going on, oh, can I just say the fucking worst character in the show? Not like worst character. Like, isn't he's a bad written character, but like, I fucking hate him. The fucking governor's like sidekick dude with the one leg. Fuck that guy. Oh yeah. Fuck that guy. (laughs) But yeah, so that's, Oh wow! This is actually based on the. So this is based on the writings of Bruce Lee. Interesting. Um, Bruce Lee wrote. Wrote this kind of sort. Oh, I'll something else real quick. It is based on an original concept and treatment by Bruce Lee. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. Hmm. So this show is actually based on... Apparently, uh, Bruce Lee was, like, writing... Like, was writing... I don't know, a movie or writing a novel or something? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, in 1971, Bruce Lee had developed a concept for a television series tentatively called Assam about a martial artist in the American Old West. He was having trouble pitching it to Warner Bros. and Paramount. According to Bruce Lee's widow, Linda Lee, Linda Lee Kedwell, however, Lee's concept was retooled and renamed Kung Fu with uh, David Cardinane, uh, um, or Cardinan, uh, cast in the lead role, but Warner Bros. gave Lee no credit. Warner Bros. stated that they had for some time been developing an identical concept created by two writers and producers, Ed Spielman and Howard Friedlander. Sources of the reason Lee was not, ca- uh, was not cast was in part because of his ethnicity, but more so because of his thick accent. In 2013, Perfect Storm Entertainment and Bruce Lee's daughter Shannon Lee announced that the series would be produced and would air on Cinemax, and that filmmaker Justin Lin uh, would, cho- would, choose to, would choose to direct the series. Um, South Africa, da 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 da, feature 10 episodes renewed for the second season. So, yeah, this is actually like originally based on a. Uh, this is originally. This show is based on a on the writings of Bruce Lee. Pretty interesting. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Cool. Cool stuff. So, if if nothing else, when you over, I mean, people out there, people out there who are on the fence, writings of Bruce Lee. 
I mean, and the action scenes are, are really good. The action scenes that are there are really good. Hold on, Devin. I think I found the one that I think that you are trying to think of. I, I really hope you're right. I'm going to post it in Discord because what would SU be without some sort of visual context clue? Yep. Please. It's the is it is it this gentleman on the left? Vague, yes, vaguely it is him, but there is somebody else too who's more recent. Um, okay, because that's the one that I thought of. I I kept going to Blazing Saddles in that. I don't remember I don't the know, character's name sure. in that, but oh my god, As, it, it's going to I I I can p- perfectly see his face. I just cannot think of anything he's in to do it. Oh my god, and I, it's it's hurting my soul. Yeah, see, I just keep relating them to that one dude from Blazing Saddles, but yeah, that's totally fine. The Governor uh, Warrior. Oh my god! He was the governor, right? The mayor. He's the mayor, not the governor. I keep calling him the governor, the mayor. Oh my god, it's gonna bother me all day. Mayor Sam Blank. Who plays Mayor Sam Blank? Christian McKay. Which is not who I'm thinking of. I, I honestly cannot think of fuck. I, oh my god, it's gonna bother me all week. Oh, that's okay. It's, fine. <laughs> it, it's literally going to bother me until I think of his name, but god damn it. Oh my god. Anyway, all right, whatever. It's not important. It is and it's not. It's important to me. Uh, but anyway, so uh basically after they're killed um and they find out that the the two the two uh Chinese workers who were killed belonged to like a popular or a um like a rich guy in the city, right? Hold on. I I think I might know who you're talking about. Maybe. Please, I hope you do, because it's going to drive me to the fucking wall. You keep 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 describing so, the show. I'll, I'll just post a picture once I find one. All right, yeah. So, uh, basically, after they're killed, uh, you know, he's like, "I want something done. I want your people. I want your people patrolling Chinatown." So then, basically, uh, the mayor goes down to the. Well, sends his guy down to the police station. It's like, yo, make a make a task force, make him assign to Chinatown. It's their job to patrol Chinatown, make it look good, right? So then they wind up giving it to uh, they give it to Big Bill, Big Bill O'Hare, Bill O'Hare. Uh, so he gets to create the squad of you know him and four other people. He's kind of mad about it because he he was I don't know if he was trying to leave the force or he was just trying to get off of like get a like, get out of Chinatown. Like I don't know if he was like on like he was patrolling Chinatown because he they say like oh you're the one that knows Chinatown the best and he was like but I was trying to get out like you know you promised me I was you know after this month or whatever I was I was getting out but I don't know if he was trying to leave or if he was trying to like leave the force or just leave Chinatown I'm not sure which way that went but basically he gets thrown back in he winds up you know getting a bunch of people together um. And yeah, I mean, so he wanted to get those people together, and then one of those people was like, just fuck no, like, I'm not doing it. One of them was really bad. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yeah, Thomas Lennon from Reno 911. Yes! That is who it is. Yeah. He reminds me of him so much, I don't know why. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So. Oh, God, my favorite thought is, like, gone, non-existent. But anyway. So basically, that happens. He gets he he designs he's, he's designed to create the task force. Creates the task force. Uh, he doesn't like one of the guys on the force. He's like, no, that guy's an idiot. I don't need him. So then he winds up getting Officer Lee. Oh, it's because Officer the other Lee, guy's an opium addict, and you want to. Well, he's an opium to addict, him. and he's also an idiot. He's just like, I don't want him on the streets. Like, yeah. it's not like it's not like he's not happy with anyone on the task force. But he's well, like, he's not happy with doing the task force. He's not happy at all. He's not a very happy person. They should bring that up later. They're like, are you ever happy? He's like, I'm happy now. I'm, like, I'm happy right now, know. yeah. <laughs> That's debatable. What was, what was that cop's name? 
Uh, O'Hare. Uh, Bill O'Hare. Bill, yeah, okay. Or William O'Hare. But yep, yeah. So, and we find out later that he's actually a part of like the, like if he's not a part of, he's like affiliated with like the Irish mob. Yep. But he also gets weapons and stuff from Chow. Because Chow's because yep. Chow's a hookup. Yep. Chow's Man, there's that scene really where fucking Aha, uh, whatever Ahan. Uh, uh, Assam. Uh, um, Assam. Yep. Assam's. We we finally do find his sister. He finds his sister, and then like the sister fucking annihilates the two dudes in the alley with the fucking machete looking thing. Yeah. Was that the sister or was that the? I think it was the, the chick from the brothel. I think it I got, was the it sister. Like, it looked like it was the chick from the brothel. It looked like it was the chick from the brothel. Like she got out of bed. Did that and went outside, but it, no, honestly, see, I, they, they I look was, really similar. So I don't know. Yeah, I think it was the sister to try to continue waging war between the two factions. Yep. Um, Which so, that comes so, up later because in the second episode, there the the task force has to go investigate that. Yeah, and fucking Officer Lee is fucking like sticking his fucking bare hands in the guts of this guy, and like he's doing like an autopsy and stuff right there on the field, and the other cops are just like, "This guy is doing? fucking weird." <laughs> I just love how he's like, he's like, Officer Lee, are we disturbing you? He's like, "No, no, it's fine. Keep talking." He's like, "Put his guts back in his stomach." <laughs> yeah, and then when he when he goes to walk away, he's like, what, "Whatever you just did right here, don't ever do it Never again." Never do that shit again. <laughs> Uh, apparently, like that cop just feels like essentially they're just the cleanup crew. They're there to like go in there, make sure the bodies get to where they need to go, and then get the fuck back out before the blades start flying again. Yep. Um. So yeah, yeah <clears throat> kind of his job. He's just like get in, get out, and move on with their day. Because like, um, at that same like opium, uh, like not hijacking, hijacking. Um, when they killed all those guys, they show up there to, to also investigate that. And then when they're investigating that, you know, uh, those guys, the, what is it? Who's the, what's the rival gang's name? Uh, like Z- Zao something or other. It's not like there's a Z in it or like the, the long, T. the long Z, yeah. the long Z. So yeah. So the long Z show up to get their people and he and he's like, Oh, like you're just gonna let them just take the evidence and he's just like it, that's not what we're here for. We we fucking show up. <laughs> we clean it up, they clean it up. It doesn't matter. Just get the fuck out of here. No. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he he wants no parts. He doesn't he doesn't give a shit. So that happens. Then uh then I think at the is that like the end of the episode, I think. Right around there. I think her killing is her killing the two people at the end of the episode? Of the first episode, maybe that might have even like, happened in part of the second episode. I don't remember now. No, first episode, sure the first, first episode was like an hour and a half long. Second episode, yeah, it, it, it threw minutes. me off because I felt like I felt like I blinked and missed the transition of the second episode at some point. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, did I like? Is this like this is a long episode? I know the second like, episode the next episode went way quicker, and I was like, okay, what the fuck happened? And I'm like, I know oh, the, hour and a half. The second episode, the the mayor's wife gets accosted and Assam steps in to help her and ends up getting arrested. Yeah, which that fucking hit to the back of the head was gnarly as fuck. Hell yeah. At first I was like, oh, they must have used the fucking slapjack, you know, the blackjack on him. But nope, he it was just a wooden club. It was just his baton that he had in his hand. Because <laughs> yep. like, he had bought in some of those blackjacks that are extra weighted. And I figured, oh, that's what he got fucking nailed in the back of the head with. Nope, not the case. Just a widow, good old fashioned wooden baton. <laughs> but yeah, man, it laid him out. It, it did, you know. <laughs> Especially like he wasn't expecting it, because like so, what happened was the uh, the mayor's wife was walking down the street, and she has like an Asian or or a uh, Chinese. Um, she has a Chinese like. Valet, handmaiden, a valet. There you go. That was the word for it. She has like a Chinese valet, and you know she was kind of parading him, like even like the uh, not parading him, but she was walking him in the street of like the air quotes, like the hot pot, like you know, like the hot pot of the city, where like basically all the 
drunk Irishmen hang out and it's just like don't do that cuz you're you're just going to you're just asking for trouble. Yeah, they call it like um, the pool or the pond or the pool, yeah, the pond or the pool like it's just where everybody I think it's like where a bunch of bars are and everyone just hangs there and getting drunk. Um and yeah, so like they did that and then like one of the guys trying to talk to her and she was ignoring him so he just walked up and started beating the shit out of beating the shit out of her valet and then he like threw her to the ground and another guy came up and that's when uh Assam came in and started like cause she was earlier like Assam saw her stand like she was window shopping or just standing there and she dropped her glove so he grabbed her glove to go take it back to her and he, he happened upon that so then he winds up breaking up the fight and then like literally down the street the cops are interviewing some people they see that officer Lee sees her runs over pulls the pulls you know two of the guys off pulls pulls the two Irish guys off and then they hit him and knock him down, and then that's when Assam winds up. You know, he gets. You know, he's still in the fight. He knocks him. You know, he, he knocks them both out, and he's like helping her off the ground. And then that's when Bill just comes in with the fucking club, starts <gasps> swinging. And they're like, "Yo, no, no, Bill, you got the wrong guy." He's like, "Nope." Yeah, even all Officer all Lee was telling him, "You got the wrong guy. You got the wrong guy." He's like, "Nope, all I saw was a Chinaman beating up on you." He's like, "No, that wasn't the guy that hit me." He's like, "Nope, that's not what I saw." <laughs> yep. Like, oh, okay, I, I see where this is going, Bill. <laughs> oh, man. It's a very racist show. Okay, for all the listeners out there who want to, you know, jokingly say that I'm racist, go watch this show. This, this show is full of racism. <sighs> History is full of racism, people. Okay? Jeez. I'm not racist. And never forget that yesterday was also history. You can you can combine those two if you so would like to. That's right. But anyway, more importantly, so that happens. So and then Assam's in jail pretty much the rest of the episode. Yeah, Assam's in jail and he's just not talking to anybody. He's acting like he doesn't know what he is. They wind up putting him down as uh, John his, Chinaman. Like, well, yeah, like so Lee's trying. He's like, "Yo, you know, give me a name. Like, can we get a translator? Can I feel we do all bad this? for Lee. Like, he's, he's trying he's to be just a trying good to do cop, his best, right?" He's yeah. just trying to do his best. And then Bill comes over. He's like, he's like, there has to be a protocol of this. Bill's like, there is. John fucking Chinaman. <laughs> John Chinaman. Write it down. That's who you are. And then he just drags Assam away. <laughs> he drags him into the basement and just chucks him in the cell. He's like, all right, there you go. Uh, so then she tries. So then um, it cuts. To, this episode's more focused on like, so they wind up leaving him there. Uh, the Tong leave him in there because they're like, hey, this takes some heat off our back because you know, the cops are looking at us for killing the two Irishmen in the alley. Yeah. He's like this, you know, this takes heat off our back. You know, he's a hothead. We don't really know him like that. Leave him alone. And then, uh, uh, young Tong or young, 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 young June. There you go. Yeah. Young June is, he's like, he, he, he's actually like really like trying to be like friends with, with a song. Like he actually likes a song. He's like, yo, like that's not right. Like we need to, we need to do something about it, you know? Yeah. But it's also like, it's his dad telling him like to shut the fuck up. So he's just kind of like, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then, you know, so they're trying to communicate with, uh, with Assam and Assam's just like not talking. He's in the basement. They call people, try different times. And then we wind up getting the, uh, the mayor. She go, the mayor's wife goes see the mayor and tells her like, Hey, they got the wrong guy. You need to do something about it. And he's just like, Hey, shut the fuck up. Basically like, shut the fuck up. This is your fault. You were parading. You were parading a Chinaman around town. This is what happened, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, and that guy, you know, he's wearing colors, and you know, he's wearing a suit and colors of the Tong Gang. He's he's a bad guy. If he didn't do this crime, he did a crime, so he can fucking sit in jail and rot. Like you know, yeah. basically, that was like his whole like his whole speech. Um, and then he winds up, and then she winds up leaving, gets pissed off, and leaves. And then she runs to her dad and her, you know. And she tries not to worry her dad because it makes it seem like her. It seems like her dad didn't sell her, but kind of sold her for the rights to put down a fucking the, railroad. No, not the railroad. It's the the street trolley tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The street trolley. Yeah, yeah. Like so for that, the goal. And it, it wasn't like he didn't sell her. He promised, like the mayor promised. Hey, like the mayor promised, like hey, you know, you know. If you do this, like you know, if if you give me your daughter's hand, da, 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 you know, you'll be the first one to have access to the street trolley. So he did it, and then he's like, 
now he, you know, he's coming to see him like, hey, you know, you're not keeping good in your promise. I have all these supplies that are just sitting here. I'm losing money by the day. Like, it, this is going to ruin me. Yeah. You know, and then and then basically, like, the mayor's assistant's all like, well, my, my calculations, you were already fucking ruined before we said anything. Uh, dude, <laughs> that assistant guy is a fucking scumbag. Asshole? He is. And then, like, he left. Like, even the mayor's like, he's like, hey, like, you know, I gave him my word, you know, What's going on? <laughs> I feel like yeah. he has his own agenda even behind the mayor. Like, oh, for sure he does. Fuck that guy. For sure he does. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So he's sitting there chilling. So he's sitting there and he's just like, yeah, you know, they, they leave and, you know, the guy leaves and he's just like, okay, it's time for me to uh, do. What? Do we have a question? Sorry. Be yeah, okay. Yeah. So. When that happened, uh, basically after that, he's just like, "Hey, you know, it, you know, it is what it is. It's, you know, I'm, you know, he's like, he even says like, he's like, he's like, oh, I'm working on something. You know, business can be difficult. Give us a couple of weeks. You know, I'm working on something. Like he's like, he's like, he's dealing with the business end more so than the mayor is. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that happens, and then, yeah. So then he leaves the. You know, she winds up leaving, and then she goes down to the police station herself, like, hey, you know, I need you, you know, I want to see the prisoner now. And then Bill's like, ah, this is highly unorthodox, and she's just like, look, make it happen. <laughs> I'm the governor's wife, make it happen, right? Yeah. So he takes her down, and he's like, all right, I'll give you, you know, I'll give you some time. So she's trying to talk to Yeah, he's like, Sam. I'll give you a few minutes, seeing as though that's how long it'll take, since he doesn't understand a word you say. <laughs> yep. So she goes on there. She's talking to Hassan, like, "Hey, you know, come on, they, they're really trying to put this on you. I know, you know, I know you're, you know, I know you're, you didn't do this kind of thing." And he's just kind of sitting there, not saying anything. And eventually, she winds up like she asks him about the murder, and he's just like, "I'm not a murderer." He's just like, uh, "I'm not a murderer." He's like, "I don't." He's like, "I didn't do that." And then she finds out that he can speak English, and then she's just like, "Well, why don't you tell them? Why don't you talk and do that?" He's just like, "To them." I'm already guilty. Like nothing I say is really going to change that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And I'm trying to think like, where did the episode go from there? Cause I'm, that's pretty that's much the end we, of it. Well, no, that's when we got the sister. Cause wasn't the sister meeting with the governor, like the governor's the governor, assistant, the, the mayor's assistant. Yeah. Like yeah, that's when we got her to make sure that there is no peace between the two tongue. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Because gangs. yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Which that's yeah, why it uh, led me to believe that she was the one who fucking gutted those people to stop the peace from even happening. Cause the, the one that she works for wanted her to set up a meet with father June to try to discuss peace. Yeah. To like renegotiate their treaty. Like yeah. that they had. Yeah. And you know, and he, and he's just like, you know, I've been down this road before I'm old, you know, I, I this doesn't end well for anybody. Oh, that's You're right. Old. Second episode ends with, the sister's boyfriend guy that Assam tried to fight and they were pretty uneven footing. Uh, him and Chow showing up to that other cop at the harbor. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and then he fucking just shoots the, he shoots yeah, the he, cop. He makes, a sh- he makes the cop shoot himself using like weird karate moves. Yeah, he makes the cop shoot himself and then he just gives uh he gives Chow the gun like, "Hey, here you go." Yeah, and clean tells, up him, tells him to clean up the body. And then that's that's where the show ends. He, it it ends with Chow just letting out a sigh like, oh, "This is my life." <laughs> Chow seems like a really inter- like okay, I will say <sighs> Young June, one of my favorite characters. I just for whatever reason, I've always hated the trope of like that triad gang member who acts to be su- who tries to be super cool but this character seems to pull it off like he is the super cool he seems like he's always wanting to have fun and that you know he he is about the business but he has fun doing it kind of thing and he's a psychopath Assam, you know okay typical badass like whatever until i learn more about his background i'm not super invested in Assam as a character Chow, I like Chow's character because he he seems to be playing all sides. I even like Chow's philosophy, you know, because you know they bring like uh, him and when he's when they're in jail, him and live the fast, die rich. Girl, 
Yeah, he's just like he's just like you know he says something and she's like she's like a stupid man would do that. She's like you you'd be better off trying to you know live a long life. He's just like huh. he's like there's no long life here. You, you know I'd rather live fast and die rich. Yeah, you don't come to America for a long life. Yeah, exactly. You don't come to America for a long life. I'd rather live fast and die rich. Yeah, but um, the thing is, is like he seems to want to help out Assam. He seems to be helpful towards both rival gangs and the cops. Like he, he seems, seems like to a really be really nice guy. He is like, a middle person who's really nice and respectful to most people. But then we see that scene where he's at the brothel, like fucking a chick, and he's just got all those whip marks on his back. Like he's yep. been through some shit, and I I'm yep. more interested to know more about Chow's story. And also, too, I forgot to mention because then we we, we wind up getting the governor actually goes to the or the mayor goes to the brothel. Yeah, in and a he's mask. There. Yeah. yeah, in a mask, and then you know, he walks in, and there's like you know, and there's a chick there, and, and he's dude. like, "Good evening," and then like another dude, and then like a dude walks out of the corner, like you know, a naked a Chinese guy walks out of the corner. He's just like, "And good evening to you too." And we're yeah. like, oh, look at this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, the- that's essentially the first two episodes of this Warrior show. And, like, like uh, I give you shit, Devin, for always recommending these shows. <laughs> I, I enjoyed the show, and I'm probably going to continue watching it. But I will say that if it doesn't... <clears throat> If it doesn't maintain my interest in the next couple episodes, it's going to be hard-pressed for me to want to continue it. Because, like... It's one of those shows where it's like, all right, I know the hooks are there, but are they going to fucking get them in the right spot to reel me in kind of thing? And I'll say this. The show has an 8.3 out of 10 in IMDb. Yeah, but you know what? Fucking Old Boy has really good reviews with everybody, and I fucking hate that movie. I well, despise this is not it. Old Boy. I understand this is that. Old Boy. Like... <laughs> I don't. I don't. Like, I, I'll, I don't I'll follow give you cri- that. Like, old boy I don't follow is, critic reviews. And, and to be fair, the original old boy, still the sucked. one that's no, the original old boy that subbed like that automatically was point. That one has an eight point four. The fucking Josh Brolin old boy has a like a five point five. And it, it's, whatever, it's not they both bad. suck. Sure. The old the old boy I watched was the original one, the Korean one. But don't you hate subtitles? I do. I fucking hate everything. I hate yeah. old boy. <laughs> but anyway, this is neither here nor there. We'll see about this this warrior show. It, uh, so far, it's good. So far, there are enough compelling characters that it's outweighing the characters that I really just dislike. Because there are a few characters in here that, like, when there's when when they have screen time, I just want to zone out until they're off the screen. Um. Like as of right now, I'm not I'm not fond of the mayor. I'm not fond of the mayor's wife. Like when they're on the screen, it's just like, oh, all right, whatever. Yeah, yeah, they're probably the driest story so far. I don't know if their story. That's gets better, the perfect but... fucking word to describe it. They're dry. Yeah, their story is probably the driest so far. Um, I I I will give you that. The the mayor and the mayor, like the whole mayor story. I I, I do kind of like the scenes with the mayor's like fucking uh like assistant but that's because i really want to see him die yeah, well. <laughs> fuck that guy but uh which i don't even know if he dies but i want to see that guy die because fuck that guy yeah but yeah the mayor i haven't like, he i haven't seen enough from him to like really like be like i'm invested in his story his, his story's kind of dry but i everybody else like i am kind of interested in their story like because i am kind of curious to see like what like what's a psalm's kind of motivation now you know that his sister kind of doesn't want shit to do with him yeah and that was kind of his whole reason to come here yeah he literally came to america to find his sister to bring her back to china which we, we really go over that conversation so like she she was mad because he basically he he should have like he did something to piss somebody off in china um and basically to save his life she fucking married the guy who was pissed off at him and wanted to kill him uh, and then basically like beat her and rape and raped her like every night. Um, and then, you know, he was supposed to be this big, bad warrior and he never came to save her. I am eager to know more about Assam's past as far as why they call him the warrior and like, like what acts did he actually do that gave him that title? Like how badass really was he sort of thing? 
Yeah, like yeah, I, I, Assam has enough hooks where I'm kind of I'm interested to see where he's going. Um, I, 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 I like seriously, I if would young, like to if see- Young June dies, I'm out. That's where, that's where I stop. Listen, I've had this same mentality when I watched Sons of Anarchy. Okay, now did you ever watch Sons of Anarchy? I did. Okay, you you know Chibs the Irishman. Yep. Uh, played by I believe his name's Tom Flanagan. Yep. Uh, through ever since season one, I was always every single episode. Every time, like me and my roommates, when when Eric and Desi live with me, when we would sit down and watch it weekly. And every single week, I'd say, if Chibs dies this episode, I'm not watching an SOA anymore. And that's been my that was my mentality all through the seasons of SOAs. When Ch- if, if Chibs dies, I'm done. He well, was my, he was I can't my favorite tell you character. If he dies, because I don't know myself, he does. I can't say out of tw- no 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 not Chibs, uh, Young June. Oh, Young June. Out of the twenty episodes that the show does have, he is credited to be in all twenty of them. Okay. So far, I can tell you that. Right. I don't know, but I don't know. It could be flashbacks or like whatever, but. All right. I, I don't I'll, know if he I'll, dies. I'll, I'll continue say. watching unless he dies. As far as I know, at least for this, like, these two seasons, he's not dead. If I wonder he, if he, if he I dies, if his father dies and he might Devin, have taken over, taken over his father. So help me. If, if young June dies, I blame Rob. That's fair. Okay. So with that being said, that's the warrior. That's what we, t- that's what we watched this week. Uh, Devin, there was something else I wanted to discuss with you. I wanted your take on something. This is uh, this next little bit for those of you who aren't interested in D and D talk. Um, thank you for listening so far. Uh, if you want to continue listening, you're more than welcome. But it is going to be D and D related. We're talking D and D. Okay. Yeah, cool. I have a question for you. Go for it. So. The fly spell. Yay. Is OP, I feel. So, it states, if a flying creature is knocked prone, has its speed reduced to zero, or is otherwise deprived of the ability to move, the creature falls... Unless it has the ability to hover, or it is being held aloft by magic, such as by the fly spell. So, for instance, if somebody with the sentinel feet attacked somebody who was hover or who was flying right above them and moved out of their threatened square, could essentially stop them in their tracks using sentinel, but they would continue flying. Also, If you had the capability, whether it be like a fighter using martial arts die and combat maneuvers, or not martial arts die, uh, your, um, what's the fucking, what's the fighter die that they use? Uh, not martial arts die, um, uh, battle master die, whatever it's called. Yeah, I don't remember what it's called now, um. But anyway, if you were to use a maneuver, right, that says you knock your target prone, and the the person that you're trying to do that to is affected by the fly spell, they can't be knocked prone. So how do you get how do you stop somebody from Oh what part of the flying spell says that? No, that's what it says in the PHB under flying movement. It says specifically if a flying creature is knocked prone, has its speed reduced to zero, or is otherwise deprived of the ability to move, the creature falls just flat out. Unless it has the ability to hover, or it is being held aloft by magic such as the fly spell. So that right. leads me to believe that if you have if you if you try to knock somebody prone who has the fly spell put on them, they are incapable of being knocked prone. I will say this. I will say this. There is, I mean, there is a, a relatively because the fly spell is concentration. So, like, if someone casts a fly spell on themselves, right, you just hit, do they have to damage. make that concentration. They have to make that concentration save, right? If they're or not, could, or if, you could dispel magic, I suppose. Or not even just that. Like, even if like the funnier thing is like if they're not paying attention to their wizard, and like it's like the barbarian who got cast fly. He's like 120 feet in the air. 
you know, he spent two rounds like going up. He's like, oh, I'm going to dive bomb next turn. It's going to be crazy. And then you're just like, oh, well, the wizard cast it on you. I hit the wizard. He takes 40 damage. He can't make that save. Now you're just going to fall 120 feet to your death. <laughs> right. Now, my whole thing comes to, like, this whole conversation comes to effect because of, like, the martial classes, like, the non range classes, like barbarians and fighters who don't have a bow, who just have, like, martial weapons, melee weapons and stuff. Mm-hmm. If you're fighting a bunch of fucking people who are just flying around the battlefield, how do you fucking hit them? How how do you get that? You're literally just stuck there with your thumb up your ass. Well, I mean, I guess the other question is, um, hold on a second. And then I have another thing about Sentinel that I want to ask you about. Like Sentinel specifically. Go ahead with the Sentinel. So, I thought I read somewhere that essentially, if you attack somebody, say a wizard, right, mm-hmm. who tried to move out of your square, you attacked with Sentinel, right? You hit him. Their speed, be- their speed becomes zero. Okay. Now, I thought I read somewhere that if that was like the first thing they did, they could then cast fly on themselves, which gives them a 60-foot fly speed. And then they could use that fly speed to then move. Because, it, it, because it happens enough. after the sentinel attack. Well, the thing is... So, but in Sentinel, it says it reduces a creature's speed to zero for the remainder of the turn. Right. So whether it's a fly speed, swim speed, or or running speed, their speed becomes zero for the remainder of that turn, regardless. Yes. Yes. Sentinel is a very strong ability. Yeah. But I, from what I've read, it, it's literally I could move away. You Sentinel me. I could cast fly, gain that fly speed, then I could continue to just fly away from you. That doesn't make sense to me. But hold on. Mm. Trying to figure it out. Yeah, see, I I don't know. Like, this just seems like the wording on okay. Sentinel. So, 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 how people are. So, okay. So, how it is, it, it does. So, the way people are saying it is Sentinel with that speed. Sentinel is how it's done, is their speed drops to zero. Let me read it real quick here from the actual book. Hold on. That creature speed becomes zero for the rest of the turn. So the thing about it is, what some people are saying is, 
The fact that trigger creature control doesn't spend the creature's movement, it doesn't subtract movement from the creature, it sets its speed directly to zero, and that setting lasts for the rest of the current turn. Do you know it's missing this portion of the ability? It does not have any clause stating that it prevents creature movement from being increased again. So, a couple people are saying, like, yeah, that would work, because it while Sentinel sets their speed to zero for the rest of the turn, it does not say, like, they cannot gain another way of moving. Like, for instance, um, like, getting hit with that and then casting Misty Step. You technically would still have zero speed, but you also gained a different way of movement, so you would be able to do that. Yeah, um, but I mean, Misty Step, that's a teleport. Right, but no, 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 but, but I'm saying, but people are saying, like, because of that, it doesn't, Sin does not stop you from gaining new speed. It just puts your speed at zero. So your speed becomes baseline zero for the rest of the turn from that point forward, but does not stop you from gaining speed. So if you then cast like haste or you cast, or not, I don't know what haste or whatever gives you speed, but I'm trying to think of something that gives you speed. Fly. Besides like fly. Well, like, yeah, like, so fly technically would work. They could do that, but they would, it would, they would still have to move. It would still subtract from that movement. So like if they can move up to 60 feet, you can't move, you know, it's, you can't, you would subtract what they moved previously from that 60 feet. Cause you can't, obviously you can't extend past your, your movement per turn. Per action, right? But if they hadn't moved yet and they were just about, if they to hadn't move, moved yet, then theoretically, yeah, like you could, if you hit them with that, you could theoretically, if they cast fly, they could, and just like fly away, like technically. Uh, and how, how people are saying it, this seems like something that Donnie brought up, and no, it was brought up to me by well, I mean, it, it, about things that are going to be happening in the home game. Like Austin mentioned it to me specifically because it's going to come into play with the Sentinel feet that I have. I will say this. I will say this, that you, I, I mean, it is. So the way people are breaking it down is they they are staying. Let me see. So, so here you go. Right. So like exam, like somebody gave it another example, like long strider. Um, has the effect of the target speed increased by 10 feet until the spell ends. Zero plus zero feet plus 10 feet equals 10 feet. So you would have 10 feet from that point on. Or fly, you would have 60, the 60 feet. So, like, if you hit gas long strider, you could move another 10 feet. Um, but, like, for instance, the like Tabaxi's racial trait of when you move on your turn in combat, you can double your speed till the end of the turn because your speed is set to zero. It doesn't give you a new static increase. Doubling zero is still zero. Right. No, I get that. So that's what they're saying. But I mean, I've also seen people say like, no, like, so, I mean, it just really depends on your DM at that point. There's not like a hard rule for it. Unfortunately, I, uh, see it, I could see it either way, but I mean, well, like I jokingly asked, I, like I, I told Austin, I was like, so this just means that every character, every enemy we go up against is going to have the fly spell now. This is just generally like, why I I dis. This is generally why I dislike. Uh, what you got? I it's a good it's a good ability, but I generally dislike the sentinel feet. I think it comes in handy more often than not. But it's very. It's, it's a matter it's of very, it's it's one of those feats. It's one of those feats in the game, or one of those abilities in the game that is very good, but it's obviously built for a certain type of character. But it's also can get abused by other classes if they want to <gasps> uh, other people it's it's built for your frontline tank to like make sure they don't get behind you and they stay in front of you and right which is essentially you. what my character is right which is totally fine like and that's that's fine right like but like my characters so i play an orc right an, right. Or, an orc bear totem barbarian yep and i have sentinel and i use a two-handed maul for a weapon okay now, that is the only weapon that I have is a two-handed maul, essentially. I do not have a bow. I do not have a ranged weapon. So if we're fighting a bunch of things that just start flying around, I literally am going to sit that entire combat with my thumb up my ass. you have a javelin? I do have spears, but they are not magical. So, And a lot of the stuff at this level we're fighting has... Um, 
either resistance or immunity to bludgeoning slash non- piercing from yeah. non-magical weapons. See, I would say, like, see, I would say if your DM designs an encounter like that, knowing what you got, like, that's kind of jank. But, I mean... I mean, I guess the other option is if you have multiple multiple attacks, you could technically attack with one, stop them, and then grapple them. <laughs> well, no, not with, not using the sentinel, sentinel feet because that's an that's a reaction. You wouldn't be able to use an action. Right. Like but you can't use the sentinel thing. If as they're well. moving, if they're already in the air with the fly speed, well, if they have the fly speed, once you hit them with the fly, if they're using the fly speed and you hit them, they're already at zero. Like they right. can't. Yeah, I get anymore. that. But I, I'm talking yeah. more so if they're, if their way of getting around me is to move away, make me waste my sentinel feet, and then them casting a fifth level spell on themselves to fly the rest of the way out. I get that. And yes, they are wasting a fifth level spell just to get away from me. But it's more so the fact Flash of third level. I, I guess I'm gonna have to get a bow or something because like Flash third level. Is it third level? It's third level. Oh, well, either way, I just like. Yeah, I mean, look, look, look. I'll be honest, right? If I'm, I'll be honest, and this is just my 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 personal <laughs> opinion as a level player and a DM. Um, if your DM puts you in a situation where because you have one feet, every enemy you go up against has something to directly counter that. That's not good DMing in my book. I will say that. Now, I will say this, too. I do not agree with, like, logistically. Oh, so I my last totem thing that I took was the, the wolf totem. So what oh. that allows me to do is if I hit somebody with a melee attack... Or if I hit somebody, yeah, with a melee attack, as a bonus action, I can just knock them prone. There is no, there is no saving throw for it. There is no check for it. Yeah, no. It's yeah, simply, really, yeah. I knock you prone. Yep. But now, I don't agree with the fact that even if you have the fly spell on you, if you're within my melee range, I should still be able to knock you prone. You can. No, a flying creature being held by the fly spell cannot be knocked prone. No, no, you can still be under the effect of prone. You just float, they float in the air. They would still take the effect of being prone. So they would still have to use their half their movement to stand, to like regain their ability to fly like normally. So you could still impose the disadvantage of them being prone. They're just not grounded on that prone. They're just floating in the air. So, then what would that would how how would that affect my my additional attack, my extra attack? Would you they would be still, prone? You would still yes, they still technically, in in my opinion, they would still be prone. Um, so like, let me hold on a second. Let me pull it up real quick again. So. Flying creature, five A. Um, flying creature, flying creature, flying creature, or fly speed, not flying creature. Flying movement. Flying creature, not prone. If a flying creature is not prone, has speed reduced or otherwise deprived ability, the creature falls unless it has the ability to hover or is being held off by magic as the fly spell. So all that's saying is they still are under the condition of prone. They just float in space. They just float in the air uh, via fly. So they can still be knock prone. The flying movement, all it says, uh, if a flying creature is knock prone, has the speed reduced to zero or is otherwise deprived of its ability to move, the creature falls unless it has the ability to hover or it's being held aloft by magic, such as the fly spell. It does not say that the fly condition or the fly spell prevents them from going prone. So they're still technically prone. They're just not on the ground. But they are prone. So if you're in range of them, you would still get the advantage of the prone. Per the rules. Again, the if the DM says, I don't agree with that, well, I mean, the rules are out the window, but that per the rules... 
under flying movement, nothing that says that it doesn't say like the creature is not prone unless, you know, the creature is not prone if it has all this, da 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 da. And then it says, you know, it, it, it the prone is because it's negated by having being held by magic or having the ability to hover. Okay. Because the, 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 unless it has, like it says, unless it has the ability to hover or is being held aloft by magic is followed by, is followed, is following the has a speed reduced to zero or is otherwise deprived of the ability to move, the creature falls. So it says the creature falls unless it has the ability to hover or is being held aloft by magic. So all that says to me is that they do not fall, but they are not immune to being prone. Okay. So they would essentially be prone, like, so they would just be flipped, like, sideways and just be floating in the air? Yeah, effectively. Yeah. Because, like, even a baseline flying creature, like, so in that statement, a baseline flying creature can be knock prone, even if they're flying. But usually they fall. They just don't fall if they have the ability to hover or being held by magic. But they can be knock prone. They just don't fall. So they just but see, I, I figured. See, the way, the reason I thought the other way, other way, is because they're. I feel like they're differentiating creatures that can fly naturally versus creatures that are flying via magic. Well, no, though. The, what they're differentiating about that partially is because, like, some I think some races, some races naturally hover, and some, um, some, like, if so, technically, like, if. Because it would make sense, right? Like, if I cast Fly on you, and you got knocked prone in the air, my magic is still affecting you, you you don't fall. Right? If I cast Fly on myself, and then I got hit... Oh, if yeah, I hey, my okay. Contact, I think this is what you just read. Note that whether it can hover or not, unless the creature is immune to the prone condition, the other effects of the prone condition apply. So the creature's yeah. attacks have disadvantage and the attacks against the creature have advantage if they are made from within five feet or disadvantage if they are made from further away. Yep. And also, when they to move, they have to take the move action to stand up. So to, to, he has to take half his move to rewrite himself. Right. Which, if I'm not mistaken, which is why... But now, here's a question. Now, hold on. Let me ask you this. Because if you're lying on the ground, if you're prone as as a non-flying creature, you can crawl along the ground. It just costs you more movement. You can essentially move half your speed while crawling. Now, if you're hovering, and you, essentially you're held aloft by the fly spell, but you're sideways, could you move your full movement just sideways? Because that is still just magically flying, or would you still say, say that no, it takes half your un- you're, un- you're under the prone condition, so I would say no. Okay. See, this is where mechanically it makes sense following these rules, but thematically it doesn't make sense in my head. Like, Yeah, a prone creature's only movement option is to crawl and stands up, therefore it, it ends the condition. The creature has a finish attack rose. So, I mean, yeah, like, so you basically, the way it would be like is you're... You could even a, a, a better way to picture prone for a flying creature, especially one that doesn't have natural wings. Imagine like they don't really have full control. Like you hit them and they're just like spinning. They're just spinning in the air. Yeah, like a top. They're yeah, just spinning in the air like constantly, and then like you fucking like they have to like take the action and like right themselves. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that makes because it you, that uh, makes it make more sense in my head visualizing. Yeah, it, like so. a flying creature can't fucking crawl. Like you can't crawl. Now, if the DM wanted to say, like, okay, they could move at, like, half or quarter speed, I'd be like, all right, that's fine. Like, I don't know what the speed difference of crawling is. I think crawling to... is just half, half, you can only move up to half your movement. Yeah, like, so I would say this, like, I would say, like, if, if I was being DM, I'd be like, if you wanted to give, like, a, a, a flying creature the ability to, air quotes, crawl in the air, I'd say it's half speed and it provokes opportunity attacks. Yeah. Or something like that. That's what I would do. But I mean, you know, yeah. So I mean, you would still technically get your the advantages of of them being prone. Again, that you, the DM may argue otherwise, but that is, in my opinion, how it should be ruled, like per per the actual rules. Right. Yep. All right. Well, that was my question with the D and D's. 
Yay. Uh, Glad so that being said, help. we are over the hour. We are right around the hour 15 mark. Um, let's see. I'm Cat Boone. Uh, uh, I was going to ask another question. I don't remember it now. Was it D&D related? No. Uh, I don't know. If I, if I remember it, I'll write it down and we'll do it next time. All right. No problem. Uh, really? But with that being said, uh, Devin, have, why don't we get a life advice from Devin this week? Life advice with Devin. Uh, hmm. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. You know what, Devin? That inspired me to have a life advice for you this week. All right, go for it. Sometimes people, you just can't come up with the answer. Yep. And then uh, this fortune cookie online tells me to tell you to borrow money from, from a pessimist because they don't expect it back. Hold on, online fortune cookie. I wanna, I wanna give you one now. Ah, uh, crack open my cookie. It says, "Are here, here? Here's bad life advice. If you need to work on something electrical, but you don't know where the breaker panel is, just kink the wire like a garden hose to stop the That's flow." That's not how that will work. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's okay. That's in. That's the. Yeah, that's that's all for the life advice. Uh. Well, no. Well, see, now you can follow that up with unlife advice. <laughs> okay. Well, this week with getting real with Rob, shit's getting real for Rob. That's all you guys need to know. This that, week, getting real with Rob, kinking, kinking an electrical wire will not stop current. Will not stop current. <laughs> uh, Devin, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at DMP underscore Pookie and on Twitch at Mr. D3. And as always, you can find me on eBay at Don't Have Sex at the Chopping Jalapenos. Oh, shit. Hey, what is this What is this thing that you mentioned a little while ago about things being in the works on your Mr. D3 Twitch thing? Yeah, that is. Uh, I intend on doing a Pokemon Nuzlocke, but I do have some life like changes happening right now, so I'm just trying to wait for my schedule to get more concrete so i know kind of what time i'm working with now so what, what expect is your, a pokemon what a pokemon nuzlocke now what's a nuzlocke explain this it's to gonna me. be a it's gonna be a blind nuzlocke for me because i've never played pokemon sword or shield so i intend to be doing that and probably a weekly basis at least one or two days a week playing that and a nuzlocke is effectively it's not gonna be a randomizer nuzlocke just random a regular nuzlocke is uh, basically, it is a self-imposed rules in Pokemon in the Pokemon game that make it harder for you. Um, for instance, and uh, and technically under these rules, you can lose a Pokemon game. Um, we're like you know standard Pokemon game. You fight, you your Pokemon dies, you white out, you go to Pokemon Center, you heal up, you go back and try again. Well, this is first rule is the Nuzlocke, the standard Nuzlocke rule. I think there's three standard Nuzlocke rules. Let me just I don't want to mess it up. I've don't know off the top of my head. One second. Nuzlocke rules. The three standard Nuzlocke rules are any Pokemon that faints is considered dead. It must be released or put into the Pokemon storage system permanently. So basically, uh, you can catch a Pokemon. If you catch that Pokemon, it must it if it faints, it's, it's dead. It's considered dead if it faints. But then so, can you go back and try to catch another wild one of that same type? That will I will answer this question. Okay. So the player may only catch the first wild Pokemon encountered in each area. Ooh. So all the different routes you only whatever your first encounter is, which is a little bit more difficult in Sword and Shield because there's overworld encounters, which means there's Pokemon that like pop up on the screen. You can see what's there. So I intend on having like a blindfold or something that when I get to like a point, I'm going to spin around, put a blindfold on, and like run to the wild randomly and see what happens. Um, and yeah, you know if I if if you catch it, you got it. Cool. If you kill it and while battling, you don't get a you don't get an an encounter for that route. If you kill it or it runs away, you 
it's considered a failed encounter and you don't get one for that route. Also, too, because you have to capture the first, you only get it one chance at the first thing you see, you have a really hard time balancing out your team for like the next gym. You like, for instance, like if you pick like the fire starter, well, if your first gym is a rock gym, you're going to have a hard time because you're weak against, you know, uh, rocks weak against, or fires weak against rock and ground. So you're like, well, what do I do? You know, usually in regular Pokemon games, I can just like try to catch something that would give me an advantage. But if I don't run into anything that gives me an advantage, well, I'm in trouble. Right. So it's those are. And then the, the third rule that is not as optional, but people, everybody kind of does it. Um, is you have to nickname all your Pokemons for the sake of having like a, a stronger emotional bond to them. So you actually care if they die to some degree. Is that something that not a, a lot of people do in Pokemon is name their Pokemons? Not everybody does. Some people don't. Some people just play the game. Like usually, usually when I when I play through like the first time, I don't usually name my Pokemon, and then like the, like the second time through, I'll usually like name them. Like I'll pick a theme for the name. Like one I named like one time I named all my Pokemon after flavors of ramen. Oh, okay. So I, so I had like z- like like zesty chicken and uh, beef. <laughs> Um. Right yep. So yeah, blackout, whiteout, game over. The starter Pokemon must be. It doesn't have to be randomly chosen, but usually the starter Pokemon you can make it randomly. These are all optional rules. Um, uh, starter Pokemon is randomly is randomly chosen. You usually roll a dice and you just get what you get. Um, the harder version of like the only route is you you catch the first Pokemon after each gym battle, which means you don't get an encounter until the first gym, which means you have to beat the first gym with one Pokemon. But I I don't do that one. I usually do the ones I do is I usually don't use stat increasing items in battle. So I don't use potions or any of the X items in battle. And I don't do um I don't over level the gym leader. So I can't go into a gym with a Pokemon over leveled with, with a higher level. I can't start it with a higher level. I can't start the gym leader battle with a Pokemon higher level than their highest level Pokemon. Okay. So that's why I usually now, do it. I have a request. Yes. And you can 100% shoot me down, but I figure this will be interesting. Go for it. What when you, you when you go to do this, there's what? Usually three of the Pokemans that you can choose at the beginning? Yeah, there's three. Let me roll the dice to see which one you start with. That's fine. Yes. I mean, this is... It's all fine. This is all blind. Like I, I literally have, I've, I have not watched past. Like, I think the second gym battle in Sword and Shield. Like I, 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 I know almost nothing about the game. Like I know of some of the Pokemon, but I know almost nothing about the game. Like what's on the route, and I'm going in completely blind. So I'm probably gonna fail. And my objective is to do this, do this until I succeed. So if I fail like forty times, I'm gonna be restarting from the beginning of the game like forty times. Like that's the objective. <laughs> Well, I just I just want to roll for your first attempt. I just want to roll the I want to be the one to roll the dice to determine who you get. That's fair. Uh, I'm okay with that. Cool. That's cool with me. Who do you but know? Right. Who do you know who the starter Pokemans are in that game? I do. It's Sobble, Grokey, and Scorbunny. Cool. I know nothing about any of those, <laughs> so it'll be good. Uh here. I will see you a picture of Sobble, Grokey, and Score Bunny. And I will tell you which one I like just based off of the appearance. You're going to like probably like Sobble the most, I would say. So this is Sobble. Oh, I like bunny rabbits. He looks surprised. He looks like he looks like he's surprised, but also dropping a deuce and maybe surprised that he is. On grow, I don't know how to spell his name. I think it's K E E Grookey. Grookey, that's what it is. There's Grookey, and then oh, he looks like a weird tree monkey. He is a tree monkey, that's exactly what he is. And then there's Score Bunny here. Okay. That's like Trix the Rabbit's cousin. Yep. Um, so, 
the evolutions of these, like uh, Sobble, the first one, he gets emo and then he becomes like a spy. Uh, the monkey become gets two sticks and then gets a big drum and like green dreadlocks. And the bunny becomes a soccer star. Well, I'm not going to lie. Uh, just based off of pure looks and first impressions of these three, my favorite is the surprise dookie. Yeah, Sobble. I thought you Sobble was going to be right. the first one, right? Yeah. Yeah, Sobble. I, I like Sobble's the best. Yeah. Surprise dookie. And he, yeah. He's not even just surprised that he's taking one. He's like surprised that he, you are watching him take one. He's just like, oh, close the door, man. It's weird. Ooh. Anyway, okay, so we're gonna end the episode there. Thank everybody for thank you everybody for listening. Um, yeah, and then he gets emo. That was the that's same the Pokemon same movie. Pokemans. Then he gets emo. Oh God. Okay, I don't like that one. And then he becomes like a fucking detective. He becomes a, yeah. He he becomes like a like James Bond Pokemon. All right, now what's the second? And show me the second and third of the bunny. Of the bunny, hold yeah, because the bunny was uh, my next favorite. All right, hold on. Scabunny, scabunny, score bunny. The second and third score bunny balls into Raboot. Oh, I get what they did there. All right, all right. He kind of gives me like the uh, Vincent vibe from Final Fantasy VII. And then that's the same bitch. It's not copy. Leave me alone, Libby. It's the (laughs) same one, Devin. Oh, he's giving people Das Boot. Uh, Yeah, I said he he becomes a soccer star. I will say I like the second and third evolutions of the rabbit more than I like the second and third evolutions of the weird surprise dookie lizard. And then I will say this because we we did it. I'll show you Grookey. You know, you, you know no, he, no one cares the about the tree monkey. So here's Thwacky. His 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 middle form. His and two up, sticks. His two sticks. It does hold two sticks, but this picture doesn't have a two stick. Them's are his drumsticks, man. Oh, I like him. He angry. Him him grumpy monkey. <laughs> and then you have Rillaboom. Hopefully, he's grumpy too. Oh, man. Okay, I like the grumpy monkey. Why doesn't his first evolution look grumpy? His first one's like all happy and shit, and then he just realizes exactly what you did and that you've enslaved him and make him pit you know, pit fight against other Pokemans, and he's just very unhappy with life. <laughs> he's also it's, a drummer. It's literally all downhill for this monkey. So... All right. Well, with that being said, thank everybody for listening. Uh, you guys can follow me on J- on Twitter at Jacks Forest Walker, all one word. On Twitch at DM Webby, and on eBay at Looking for This Grumpy Monkey. Uh, and until next time, everybody, fuck Booster Gold. FBG. Grumpy monkey. Grumpy monkey. I'm just saying we're coming out. Grumpy monkey. Surprise dookie. Grumpy monkey.